In today's episode, we're going to go over some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. Why the CIA had a very successful project dealing with what's called remote viewing, where people would use certain techniques in consciousness and be able to see remote places. I got to know a lot of the really accomplished remote viewers who worked in that CIA program. And that program ran for 20, 30 years. People say, oh, that can't be. I say, oh, yeah, it is. It's like a seer. It's like a, a shaman or a seer who has the ability to see remote places or the future with consciousness. Now, think about technologies where you're, you're dealing with civilizations that are 100,000 or more years advanced than us, many of them. All their technologies, we're using electromagnetic system here at the speed of light. Right. You're using technologies that are interfacing with quantum thought. Sort of like what Elon must have working on with Neuralink, but not with wires and stuff. But it's a consciousness field and thought interfacing with machine. They have perfected that the way we have perfected a cell phone or a video call or FaceTime. A lot of those technologies, if they're brought forward, you know, in, in 10 to 20 years, we'd have a new a new civilization here. Remote viewing has always interested me. Do you think that everyone has the capabilities to remote view, to astral project, things like that? I really feel like a lot of people have that capability, but we just have it so suppressed that we just don't know how to do it. I, I think that that is one of the biggest reasons why we have things like cell phones and certain radios and things like that. It takes our frequency away and it keeps us distracted to the point where we don't even know it exists now. Because to me, I didn't know remote viewing was a thing until I was well into my 20s. And to hear about people talking about being able to do it so vividly, so fluently, it just boggles my mind that there's not more people that can. And I, I really feel like it has to do with technology being a suppressant to us and that that's what higher ups want is for us to not be able to do these types of things only a select few so that they can control them leave a comment on your thoughts of this type of theory because i like it but i don't know if it's necessarily true or not but i feel like it is when they set the bomb off at trinity and that other that's when the first tic tac showed up that was a crash uh and it was 12 miles away from trinity this tic tac the way it was described by people who discovered it first, which were kids. Its manufacture was extremely advanced. And the kids who stole stuff out of the walls of this after it crashed, it was like uh, hair-like stuff came out of the walls. And it tingled when you held it in your hands. If you took it out at night, it would glow in the dark. It glowed in the dark for like 25 years. Because some of these kids that stole parts of this stuff were putting it on their Christmas trees. That's not human manufacture. That's manufactured by somebody else. It may be that the people who manufacture the Tic Tacs live in certain areas on our planet that are unknown to us. Because that's what they've done for thousands of years. It's our arrival that changed everything. I've been curious about UFOs and if they really come from space or are they a part of some other elites organization manufacturing company that we just have no clue about and it's only top secret military that has this information or because if that's the case, that would be the reason why aliens are even a thing in the first place. It was probably a man-made coin phrase during like Roswell and things like that, because that's when the technology started to accidentally get discovered because of errors and faults. And then they had to come up with a side story to keep people distracted from the truth, which was these are actually man-made crafts just done by an organization that nobody knows about. And let's just blame aliens. And so people are always looking up into the sky for aliens, not necessarily looking around them for the people that are actually making this equipment. It's a pretty interesting theory, and I kind of believe it, to be honest. I used to really, really believe in aliens, and I still do, but the more and more I think about it, the more I'm like, eh, aliens were created by man to distract us from the real truth, and that's just them making this new age technology so that they have a one-up on other civilizations, other countries, and things like that. 
free unlimited energy for the entire world. They really tried to tell us it wasn't possible. All right, calm down there, Mr. First Law of Thermodynamics, because we had one of the smartest people in history on the job. It said that Nikola Tesla actually invented a system for free wireless electricity accessible by everyone on Earth. Turns out he may not have been the one who came up with it, but was using ancient knowledge over 5,000 years old. Tesla is famously quoted as saying, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. What was he trying to tell us? He has quite the resume. The founder of Alternating Current, which runs our entire power grid today and was also a huge advocate of free wireless electricity, which is exactly what his Wardenclyffe Tower project intended to do. A structure that was designed to harness energy from the natural vibrations of the earth and convert them into electric potential. Exactly what the Giza power plant theory suggests the pyramids were built and used for. Tesla publicly demonstrated his use of wireless electricity by famously lighting light bulbs without any wires attached to them. Wardenclyffe Tower was the scaled up version of that and millionaire JP Morgan saw incredible potential in profiting from Tesla's ideas, so he helped fund the construction of this tower. And just like the pyramids, it was built directly on top of underground aquifers, cavities beneath the surface with powerful flowing water that produced natural vibrations. Using copper wires and iron rods, extending deep beneath the surface to transmit this energy up through the tower and into the atmosphere. Then distribute that energy wirelessly around the world for anyone to use through a conductive layer of Earth's ionosphere. According to him, Earth was a giant electrical generator spinning around two two magnetic poles, which it is, and it produces a f ton of energy. In the 1897 patent Tesla filed, he claimed that at a certain altitude above the Earth, there's a stratum of air that can conduct electric currents, which at the time was considered wacky pseudoscience, but in 1952 was discovered to actually exist, known as the Schumann Resonances. Through this conductive layer of the atmosphere, the electricity would theoretically be distributed around the world via a network of receiving towers. Tesla, along with many eyewitness reports, claimed that the tests of the tower in 1903 were incredibly successful. They lit up the night sky and even powered nearby objects. Newspapers even reported on it, like this, Tesla's amazing plan to harness free currents back when you could actually report on the news without getting censored. But ask any debunker who wasn't there and they'll tell you these towers didn't produce enough electricity to be useful and were also harmful to anyone near them. In order for this network of wireless energy to work, it would need quite a few of these towers in key locations around the world. When Tesla asked JP for more money to continue his work, Mr. Morgan took a look and realized it wouldn't end well for him if he continued. JP Morgan owned General electric. AT&T, copper and coal mines, lumber yards, rubber plants, steel mills, railroads, all of which required the consumption of traditional fuels to keep running. If he invested in more of these towers to deliver virtually free energy to everyone in the world, it would render the rest of his businesses obsolete. So he cut off funding and even told his rich friends to ignore this project, despite Tesla sending him monthly letters asking for more money for five years straight. Tesla lost his funding, the tower was destroyed, and he died relatively poor, having all of his work seen by the government after his death, never to be seen again. And strangely enough, the government office of alien property was standing by and ready to take a shit as soon as Tesla passed in 1943, raiding his New York City apartment and warehouses, confiscating all documents, some of which were given to a certain John G. Trump. Quite an interesting tale for another time. Skeptics love calling Tesla a mad scientist crackpot, dismissing this theory as pure fiction, but his list of inventions is among the most impressive out of almost anyone in history. Along with his revolutionary experiments, Tesla invented a AC electricity, which powers your home, and the electric motor, everything you see here, as well as the remote control, the radio, improvements to the x-ray, and even predicted smartphones and the internet back in 1926. He's quoted as saying, when wireless is perfectly applied, the whole earth will be converted into a huge brain. We shall be able to communicate with one another instantly, irrespective of distance. That's exactly what we have today. Pause if you want to read the whole quote, which may I remind you is a hundred years old. His proposed network of towers would have supplied unlimited, clean, and basically free energy worldwide. Using the principles of the Giza power plant, theory, which Tesla was actually a firm believer in. He was fascinated by the pyramids of ancient Egypt and even drew inspiration from them in his work, with his devices even being referred to as Tesla's electromagnetic pyramid based on his designs depicting the movement of energy in his towers. Well, the pyramids are suspected to have been built for the same purpose, drawing vibrational energy from the earth and distributing it around the world through the atmosphere. Would that have even been possible 5,000 years ago? Turns out it might have, with some even claiming proof as far back as 30,000 years old. I explained exactly how it would have worked back then and we're not done diving into this one. I'm a huge fan of Nikola Tesla. I think that that man was onto so many things that were genius and the simple fact that JP Morgan 
seen that and basically shut him down because he would not have made any money if we had had unlimited power, especially one being so simply produced. All you need is a good aquifer and copper going into it with a copper tower, probably utilizing sacred geometry, but nonetheless, it's not as complex as running a whole power plant. And that is intimidating to these type of people. I would like to test this out myself. I do not necessarily have that much copper to be able to drive it down far enough into the aquifer and to be in the sky high enough with enough mass to gain any electricity. But if I ever get the capabilities to obtain that much copper, I'm definitely building one and I'm testing this out myself for sure because I guarantee that there's something to this. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And if you look at this graph, you'll see that 21% of the viewers that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, while 78% plus are not subscribed but keep coming back to watch more of my content. So to the 21% that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much. And to the 78% that aren't subscribed, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thanks for watching. Is it just me or is there a spiritual shift going on? And no, I don't mean this in some kind of new age crap, mercury retrograde, this, that, and the other. I mean an actual spiritual shift. This is me, a Christian, saying this. It was like Monday night, I think it was where I just out of nowhere, I've been feeling the regular stresses of life as we all do. And out of nowhere, I just had this overwhelming peace just overcome me. And I just can't help but wonder and feel like something big is going to happen. And I don't know if that's just in my life or something at a huge scale, like in society in general. I mean, something huge like Jesus returning or so I know, I know it may not obviously be that, but still it's like, what, what is going on? I was scrolling through TikTok. I saw some other people making videos and saying like, did you guys feel that? Did you guys feel that? And it's just, I can't help but talk about it and see if anybody else has felt this same thing and I'm not even necessarily saying that if something really big happens that it's automatically going to be a good and awesome and great thing like what if it's tribulation what if it's something bad you know I know some people believe in pre-trib rapture I'm more inclined to believe that that's not the case and that even Christians will go through um tribulation but that's neither here nor there it doesn't affect salvation which one you believe in but just saying even if it were something bad like that I just think it's the peace from Jesus to know that hey whatever is coming whatever happens if crap hits the fan if it's terrible we'll get through it we're built for this we can overcome it so I just I just wanted to share that and get some comments and see if anybody else has felt this same thing. And I also just want to encourage you, okay, if I feel like something big is going to happen, I'm not a prophet. So maybe that's not the case. It's just a hunch. But regardless, we are not promised tomorrow. None of us are. I have felt a weird presence lately as well, and by lately, I'm within the past year, maybe even two years, something in my body is telling me something massive is going to go down. I don't know if it's because I watch TikToks that talk about wars happening or financial crisis or anything like that, but I don't have dread about it. But I have this feeling something is going to happen, whether it's good or bad. My body and mind is telling me something is happening and it's going to happen soon. Just like this individual said here, does anyone have this same feeling? Because I would like to know if you do have this feeling and what you believe it to be and where it's coming from exactly. If it's coming from a religious standpoint or if it's just coming from anxiety and nerves and things like that. Let me know. Hey, Chat GPT what do you see right has now? now got a robot body. I see a red apple on a plate in the center of the table. This a is dry figure. rack with cups and a plate 
and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. They work Great. with Can I have something to eat? and they've created this robot. And if you look sure thing. at the robot's face, that is the same icon, the same image you get when you use the mobile phone version. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. Great. So based on the scene right now, where do you think it the dishes in front of you go next? It is mind blowing how fast we are moving. This is the next step of Android technology. And I could see this type of technology taking a lot of people out of work really quickly within the next five years once they perfect these systems and they're capable of moving more fluently and thinking for themselves. They're going to be a lot of people losing jobs, probably me included, because everything that that thing was capable of doing, I'm capable of doing, and it probably can do it a lot better than I can. So it's a, it's going to be an interesting and scary future to look forward to, but in another way, I'm kind of excited about it. I love that kind of technology, to be honest. The thing that really freaks me out is even natural remedies are starting to be bought up by these corporations. So, you know, Bragg's apple cider vinegar, uh -huh. Bill Gates bought it. Oh, God. Bill Gates now owns one of the few natural <laughs> healthy tonics we had, and he's putting the apples in it. With oh, that, the appeal? The appeal, the creepy ass. Oh, what is that? That's like a coating that they spray on the outside of vegetables. It's some schmegma to keep the apples uh, preserved longer. Is it just apples? Is Thought he just like so obsessed that he too? didn't invent apple computers? Ah, that he's just like just poisoning everything yeah, apples? No, he just has to. But yeah, it's like to for Costco apples to stay fresher longer. But what is in it? I would love to know. Ugh. I would love to know. These motherfuckers, they can they get stuff out there before anybody's aware that these things mm -hmm. are a problem. Mm -hmm. And then like years later, like, what's in mm -hmm. it? Talc asbestos. Yeah. And then you don't find out till later. So it's yeah. like talking about this and just being like well, being suspicious about like should apples last for four weeks? I feel like Bill needs a hug. Like, why are you working so hard? Did you see the video of him against trees? What? Bill Gates, look up Bill Gates against Oh, trees. he thinks you should bury all the trees. He's like, I don't plant trees. Like, he doesn't believe in trees. <laughs> Someone needs to blow this guy. I volunteer as tribute. I have a theory that they're doing this to food, conditioning food, and setting food to a certain standard because the next generation of individuals, like our kids now, are going to grow up thinking that that's normal, and they're going to be like, oh, I've eaten it this long. If it has not killed me yet, then it's fine. And that's not okay. And I really feel like that's the mindset that these individuals have because to us, that's horrible. But to a kid that grows up eating it and not really noticing the effects of it being a thing until they're much older, they're not going to care about it as much because they're so used to it. And that's what their main goal is, is they're trying to get people to not care about it because it's already a done deal. And that's not good. That's why I love growing my own stuff. If you have the capabilities of growing your own produce, you should definitely do so. Even if the produce has been altered by seed, it's still way safer than having this produce that's been treated as it's been grown. And it's still a much better route to take to grow your own stuff. If you have the land to do it, I highly recommend, you know, searching up some YouTube videos on how to grow proper crops, how to grow proper trees, fruits, and vegetables. It will save you not only money, but in your health. It will definitely improve your health greatly. Do you think we need to worry about what they're putting in our electronics? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll give you one example. I, I bought this awesome all-in-one vacuum mop called Tinico. It completely connects to a Chinese server to uh, to transmit and receive information. Like I made it, I made a joke out of it. I actually have a video of it where you could turn the audio on for it. Like when you plug it in, it says charging started, charging stuff. I think when you put it on and off. I can control that with my computer through a Chinese cloud server. There's no reason that that vacuum and mop should connect to a Chinese cloud infrastructure whatsoever. And at any point, they could change the way that functionality works and take over my home network with this vacuum mop. So Are you serious with a vacuum mop? Yep, yep. How many devices do you think has have these things in them? Anything with a Wi-Fi connection, it's you know not not ever, not everything's going to be China beaconing back and forth. Anything with Wi-Fi capability is going to open up you know an attack vector. Washing machines, refrigerators, just oh, why, yeah. why does a vacuum mop? 
I don't know. <laughs> Wi-Fi capability. I can adjust the volume. I can check when the last time I used it. Does it need to be cleaned? Does it, you know, it tells you all that stuff, but it's using a Chinese server. I'm a huge fan of technology. I love all different forms of tech. I love smart devices. I love video game consoles, TVs, all of that. But there is a limit to when my smart devices reach its its threshold and having a vacuum cleaner that hooks up to your internet, a refrigerator, a washer and dryer, things like that should not have to hook up to your internet. What happens if your internet goes out and you can't control your functionalities that you can only control through your phone or through a computer? That's my biggest concern. I'm not necessarily worried about other countries taking data from me or things like that because what I currently, my phone does that already. So I'm not really worried about that, but there is a limit to how far I like to take my technology and how it's being used. Watch out because reptilian ancient humanoids may just be feeding off your negative energy. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Now I'm one to talk like that with the crazy shit that I do. And look, there may just be reptilian fucking people out there, but if they're feeding off of our negative energy, that's not something we should be demonizing them for. As above, so below. Fungi are consuming our energy in a way on this biological plane of existence and we're not complaining about it. I just saw a video talking about the prison earth theory that basically says these reptilian motherfuckers are keeping our energetic souls trapped here so they can continue to feed off of our negative energy. And although our biological justice system may be fucked, the astral universal kind of justice system isn't. Even if earth is some sort of prison, it's a soul prison for us to learn from our mistakes. Look around, this is a pretty damn good prison. When you take yourself out of society, which is kind of the lesson I think we're supposed to be learning here. The way our human body is built is really interesting. And I do wonder sometimes who built that. Like, are the reptilian motherfuckers our, our creators? Like, that would be fucking crazy. But even if they're not, it doesn't take away from the fact that them feeding off of our negative energy is, like, kind of a good thing. As a human, you're consuming things off this planet. You just have to learn how to do that in the most coefficient way. So using the things that the Earth no longer needs or really integrating your, you know, productivity into it, but in a way that keeps giving back back to the earth one of those two ways so you'd have to imagine that if there's some entity doing that to us the only reason our brains are so scared of it is because it's reflecting what we know we're doing to this planet the energy harvesters that we are and then the fact that we paint it as escaping planet earth why do we want to escape there's so much to discover there are so many countries cultures all over this planet you have a whole lifetime to live and plenty to discover but upon coming back to the united states after five years of going to high school in costa rica i realized that because people have never really left the united states they, they don't realize this. I've often wondered about this kind of theory before because we have so much negative news, negative information constantly being fed to us. And we have so many devices that can share our negativity, like phones and things that gets transmitted through radio waves, things like that. Who's to say that there's not entities out there that do feed off of that? And that's the reason why we have so much negativity in the world. So much like news, for example. I think news is one of the worst things to watch as far as being positive because it's not. There's barely any positivity. They might sprinkle a little bit here and there, but most things on news is extremely negative. And I feel like there is a reason behind that. And it's not just to cause fear and make people a little bit more cautious. It's to keep people in a negative state of mind. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I don't really watch news because I've seen the news channels really hurt family members of mine where that's the first thing they do in the morning. They'd watch news and then they'd get so depressed because of the news that it depressed them throughout the whole day. And who's to say there's not an entity out there that has created this system just to cause that feeling alone? It's an interesting theory that I've definitely thought of before plenty of times. Let me know what you guys think of this, because I can't be the only one also thinking that. It's been ruined because I fucking had the misfortune of being in this fucking country. America is a hellscape. The United States is a hellscape. And this, this video is really for the Australians. Because you all know who you are. Like, we come on this app and we see Americans talk about their country, and often it's really irritating stories of false American exceptionalism. And then you see stories from people in the United States dealing with their healthcare system. And you see the damage that is done, the real true human cost 
of a lack of universal health care. And I mean, Australians don't have a perfect health system by any stretch of the imagination, but it's pretty good. I've got to say it's pretty good. Um, my experience with the public health system has been pretty extensive. Um, I know that the National Disability Insurance Scheme has like, it has its pitfalls, but my God, it's there. It's there. We have something. We have it. And I know Australians love to just mm, rub that in Americans' faces, but it's not funny because you need to go back and watch that guy's story. I was moved by it. I felt terrible for his experience. Like I nearly cried. I nearly cried, guys. And I know Americans are annoying. They are. Like a lot of them are really annoying and really ignorant, really stupid. And it's frustrating to hear them talk about how amazing their country is and how we almost want to move there to enjoy the freedom and prosperity uh, because they've got a an origin myth that has no basis in modern reality. Because, yeah, it's just really... And that is really, really frustrating. But at this point, when people are talking people from the United States are talking about their experience and talking about what it's like to live in that country. When we kind of go, yeah, well, in Australia, we've got this, 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 it's so great. Um, and we're rubbing it in their face and we know they can do absolutely nothing about it. Their government does not care about them. And in fact, there is a sizable amount of their population that facilitates this level of cruelty. All because they're like, mm, I don't want to pay more taxes and they want to have some obscene military budget, which I'll admit uh, Australia benefits from that obscene military budget. Um, hmm. My point is we need to stop punching down on this issue because it's ugly. And if you can't have compassion for people who are in the situation so many people in the United States are, um, I mean, that's a really, really bad indictment on you. I mean, just imagine, guys. There are people who need employment to access health insurance for health care, except their health issues prevent them from working. So therefore, they have to work with these health issues. I, like, unbelievable. Tying your health insurance to your employment has got to be the most evil shit I've ever heard in my life. And there are people living with it. This is why so many health outcomes and health metrics are so poor in the United States because of their broken healthcare system and their government does not give a fuck at all. Anyway, I feel really bad for this guy. This was a bit of a, this ended up being quite, quite a bit of a rant, but we need to just stop being dicks to nice Americans or Americans that are suffering. The stupid ones, go for it. I'm not going to disagree with what she has to say about America's educational system. I personally come from a very poor part of America where the educational system was pretty much non-existent, and that's why I am the way I am. I'm not very intelligent, but it is what it is at this point. On to the healthcare side of things, I wish we had free healthcare, but I have heard from a lot of people from countries that have free healthcare, I heard that their service was not that great. The, everything is so slow moving. Like if you have to situate yourself to go into the hospital, sometimes it can take a couple of days to get in. Again, this is just what I heard. And here in America, normally if you need to go to the hospital, everything's pretty quick, fast. Even if you do not have insurance, they prioritize people with insurance. But if you do not have health insurance, you still get treated fairly quickly and you get billed to pay monthly. You don't have to pay right up front on a lot of situations. So I am curious about other people in other countries. Leave a comment down below letting me know your experiences in your country, whether you have free health care, paid health care, however your health system system works in your country, I am interested to know more about it because honestly, I really don't know that much about the healthcare system in other countries. I barely know about it here in America because I try to avoid going at all costs unless there's some major issues with my family and they have to go to the hospital. But other than that, I avoid hospitals. I avoid the health system altogether and just try to live as healthy as possible and not break any bones. When somebody dies from your life, there's some things that happen that nobody really warns you about. Like when somebody walks by and looks just like them and the shock it is to your body, it gets easier and you start to prepare yourself the more you see somebody 
that could look like them. And then you eventually like seeing people that look like them. It's comforting. Also, they're still so vivid in my mind. It's like they're right there. Everything. They say that they slowly fade away or you're going to forget them. I'm always going to see her face so clearly. Oh, and also when they come through, they're going to be super happy, like every time in your mind. And they're going to say things like, I'm not dead. You don't get it, mom. And birthdays are harder than the day the day died. She would have been 14 today. It's It gets easier, but it's worse than the day they died. And I said, am I just going to be looking for a little girl my entire life? Everywhere I go, I'm going to be looking for a little girl, not a grown girl, not a woman, not a teenager, a little girl for, for 50 years. Yeah, this kind of stuff happens to me quite a bit. I've lost a lot of family in my life, and sometimes when I'm like in town or at a restaurant, I'll look at someone real quick and I'll have to do a double take because they look just like someone that I knew. And there's like, dang, that person looks just like this person. And sometimes the double take reveals that it really doesn't. So it was like my mind played a trick on me and made me think that I seen someone that I didn't see. That's, it's a pretty crazy experience to go through. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode here. As always, if you were interested in any of the clips that I played, links are in the description in the order that we watched them today. And with that being said, have a good day.